Okay, for this short video today, we will actually be taking a look at retrieving a firmware file, um, extracting that firmware file using firmware modification kit, and then we'll also be using Quick Emulator to uh, copy that file system that we extracted from the firmware file over into the Quick Emulator image, and then hopefully we'll be able to fire up the web server binary and then actually do some dynamic analysis against the actual running web web admin or interface without actually having the device itself. So a couple of things we need to look at before we start that. Um, like I mentioned, you can actually go to this URL here and actually pull down pre-compiled quick emulator images for use in doing this. So like the person who put all this, the, the folks that put all this together, they've got MIPS uh, images out there, ARM images and so forth. Um, pretty much what you need to um, try to emulate whatever these devices, whatever the firmware you happen to pull down, whatever device it's meant to run on. So in this example, we'll actually pull down the firmware um, for a D-Link home router, this firmware version 2.81. This is the one we'll actually be looking at. So that's easy enough to pull that down. And one thing to mention before we get started, um, in order to, it's easy enough to kind of find out um, which uh, pre-compiled quick emulator image you actually need um, and, you know, kind of what the firmware is meant to run on. So it's easy enough to run binwalk um, without the without extracting and then just run it against the um, .bin file that you've downloaded. So if you run it against that, you'll see that hey, it's running MIPS, or it's supposed to be running against MIPS. Um, then you'll also see that it's got the squash FS file system. So if you use firmware modification kit, um, I mean, it's pretty straight. It's really straightforward just to extract this particular file system. So it always won't be like this. And you may have to do some other crazy things that actually get the file system extracted. But for this one, anyway, it's uh, pretty straightforward. And you can simply extract it with the firmware modification kit. So in order to extract it, just real quick, um, I mean, it's easy enough to simply run the extraction script out of the firmware modification kit directory and then just run that against the binary or the .bin file like that, and then that should extract it. All right, so once you do that, um, you'll actually see a directory created FM, called FMK. So you can change directory to FMK. You look under there and you actually see a couple other directories, but the one we're interested in is obviously it's root file system. So if you change directory into root file system, and there you go, there's your file system extracted from your um, .bin file that you downloaded from D-Link. All right, so a couple things before we get started on firing up the um, image for a quick emulator. Now, in order for the um, quick emulator machine to actually get an IP address so that he, you can actually get to or run some tools against the web, ad, web admin inter interface from, say, inside here, the Ubuntu VM or, or somewhere else outside on your network, you'll need to make a couple of modifications to the actual um, networking interface for the Ubuntu um, firmware. So it's easy enough. Uh, it's just a matter of making a change here and add basically what you're doing is adding a bridge interface that the um, quick emulator that quick emulator can use and actually get a DHCP um, or an IP address using DHCP from your normal network um, you know whatever hands out um, IP addresses on your network it can the quick emulator machine can actually get an IP address from that. So once you set that up, um, it's easy enough to add that into the um, interfaces file. And once you do that, then you should be good to go to actually fire up the emulator itself. And that's just a matter of running this particular command and making sure that you've actually got the network parameters added onto it so that you can actually um, take advantage of the um, bridge interface. All right, so we'll fire that up. And we'll give this a few minutes just to start up. So you can see here, it starts up a new window for Quick Emulator and it starts to boot up, boot up the image that you've um, instructed it 
to boot up. So once it fires up, um, for the example, I've already copied over the root file system, but what you'll basically do is copy over the root file system that's over here and then copy it into this um, quick emulator machine. And once we copy it over, then hopefully we'll be able to actually fire up um, some of the binaries that were actually in the um, firmware file. So we'll log into here. Like I mentioned, um, I've already copied over the root file system from the ex that was extracted from the firmware. Um, but the other thing to mention too, hopefully your networking parts is pieces working correctly. So if you do IF config, you should see that this um, machine actually has an IP address. And hopefully it's, it's acquired an IP address from your normal um, DHCP server on your network. So at this point, again, you can simply copy over the files using SCP or whatever into here. Um, which will give us our root file system. So if we change directory into here, we'll see that we've got the same file system over here that we had, um, that we originally extracted from the firmware file. Okay, so at this point, we are going to basically use change root and to try and fire, fire up the binary. So in this case, we're actually gonna be looking at the web server, which, on this particular firmware, it's actually running light HTTP as the web service or web server. Um, so we'll try to attempt to fire that binary up and see what happens. So we'll simply run, uh, we'll do change root. And the binary we're looking for is actually in user bin. And again, like I mentioned, it's light HTTP. And for this particular instance, we'll have to feed it a um, configuration file, um, which is located in mount HTTP and the comp file. So we'll go ahead and fire that up. Um, and if you don't get any errors, um, you're probably good to go. Um, but again, I mean, obviously if you get some errors, they're probably pretty easy to chase down and get fixed. Um, but anyway, in this case, uh, we've got it running. Well, let's make sure. Um, so again, the IP address for this is 1.34. So if we go here, yep, we'll see that actually we've got the web interface running um, that came with this particular firmware for this home router on D-Link. Now, the one thing to mention too, you should probably take a look at this and make sure things are, all the things you need to test are actually working on here because there's all, since we're emulating this, there's always a chance that particular pieces and parts of this um, might not be working. So again, check that before you actually start testing. Um, but it does look pretty good um, that we may, that we should be able to actually test this interface. All right, so I'm not actually going to go through like showing the testing of the interface. So you can actually, you know, you can fire up your, you know, whatever your favorite tool is for testing web inter web admin interfaces um, or web interfaces in general. Um, but the one thing I will mention, um, there's actually a couple ways you could have done this. Um, there is a chance that you could actually have just co simply copied over all the HTML files or whatever was in the the document root for the web server and copy that over to some generic, you know, web server. Maybe you've just got light HTTP running on just some kind of generic Ubuntu um, VM and probably you might be able to get it to work. Um, again, if it looks like it's working, you know, make sure to check it and make sure it actually is working and you can actually do some viable testing of it. Um, but it, it is possible to actually do that. Just copy over the files themselves onto some generic web server and run it like that. Uh, but in this case, uh, we wanted to emulate it because the other thing we can do in addition to the web interface is actually run thing, run um, testing against the web server itself. So like for this, uh, we could actually fire up, you know, so we could fire up the fuzzer from Kali Linux or something like that and actually point that at the web service and actually beat up on it that way to see if we can find any vulnerabilities that way. So again, not only does this give us, does this give us access to the web admin interface, it also gives us the ability to test the web service itself 
um, running in um, an emulated environment. Um, the other interesting thing too, and this is just a complete side note, but um, you know, if you're running tools against against this particular version or whatever version of the web server you happen to be looking at for your particular firmware file, so like for this example, uh, this particular version of Light HTTP is it's actually um, 1.4.28. So if you are able to find um, some per particular vulnerability in here, you can actually go to Shodan and actually put that version in there and then kind of see, you know, how many um, devices might be running this particular version, especially if it's vulnerable. Um, out on the internet. So that's just an interesting side note that you might want to do if you do find something interested in, interesting, like an interesting vulnerability in the admin interface itself or the web service to actually go into Shodan and actually kind of take a peek and, you know, see how many, how many devices might actually be running a vulnerable version. My guess is it's probably a lot. Um, but anyway, nonetheless, it'll still be interesting to see how many are running a particular version of whatever web service you might be happen to look at in your particular firmware file. So that's it for the video for for today. Um, again, um, just to summarize, we actually pulled down a firmware file, extracted that firmware, or extracted the file system out of that firmware file using firmware modification kit. Um, we used Quick Emulator to fire up a pre-compiled image. In this case, it was MIPS. And then we copied over the extracted file system from the firmware file over into that quick emulator uh, machine. Um, and then we were able to change root and then fire up the web server binary so that we could actually look at the web, web admin interface for this device without actually having the device itself. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day.